It's time for a pattern review and a sew along. It's finally here. It is the first make as part of my Make 9 2023. So if that's some content you would like to see, keep on watching. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs. And in this video, we are going to be talking about that first make as part of my Make 9 2023. So I'm gonna put it up so you can see it, but it is for the top. So I have a top on and I'm gonna tell you all about it and then we're gonna get over to the sew along. But if you are new to the channel, welcome. Hello, ciao, guten tag, aloha, hola, konnichiwa, wagwan, bonjour. If you are returning, you know what to do. Go get you a quick snack, something to drink, come on back so we could go ahead and get into this quick pattern review and then off to the sew along. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into this quick pattern review and then off to the sew along. All right, so for this pattern, the one that actually won was no surprise, right? <laughs> Simplicity 9705. Now, Simplicity 9707 was a second close, okay? So these two ran close and close. This one won by three more votes over Simplicity 9707. Now, Simplicity 9707, Brittany J. Jones did a tutorial for that pattern as well. So if you're looking for that pattern for a sew along, you can go over to Brittany J. Jones' video so you can actually see it. All right, now, Simplicity 97, let's go ahead and get into the pattern description. So for Simplicity 9705, it is a fitted top with features a darted neckline and invisible back zipper. View A and view D has the cutout in the back, and then you also have like the long sleeve, the long sleeve view of view A and C, and then it has like uh, pleats going up the sleeves and it has like a little slouchy effects at the sleeve area but this is a fitted top you also have like darts right here at the neck area and then you have waist seam darts which they call fishtail darts or waist seam darts all right but that is the pattern description for this pattern let's go ahead and move over until the skill level so for the skill level for this pattern it's rated as easy to sew do i feel that it was easy to sew Absolutely. This was an easy to sew pattern, but I went ahead and did a sew along for this one because there was only three tops to choose from. Um, but I feel like this one is easy. The only thing that could trip you up would be the waist darts, which is the fishtail darts that you will see in my sew along as well as the pleats that's right here on the arm. I feel like the pleats detail made the top. Okay. <laughs> so I do like that as well. Now that we talked about the sewing skill level, let's go ahead and talk about the notion shoes. So the notion shoes for this pattern is just two. You need one button and then you also need a 14 inch zipper. So you will hear that in my sew along here shortly. Let's talk about the fabric used. So the fabric used for this pattern, I just used some regular um, cotton fabric from Joann's. Um, the color is actually in just a regular red. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the description box below as well up, uh, as well as on the screen for which fabric I use. Now, this one was just pretty much from my stash. Okay. Um, because this, if you do not remember when I did the, um, last year I did hashtag so much colors, nineties edition. I made a, it was a collaboration and I made with Monique. Um, and I made a color block dress. One side was pink, one side was red. I'm gonna put the picture up so you know what I'm talking about. And I can't remember the pattern number, but I'm gonna put all the details in the description box below, as well as up on the screen so you are able to see that dress that I made last year. So this was the remainder left over of that fabric. So I went ahead and used um, the red for this, you know, this um top for sure let's talk about now i want to talk about the pattern pieces 
However, you're gonna hear it again in the sew along. So I'm not just gonna tell you the pattern pieces. You can hear it in the sew along. But there's five pattern pieces that I use for this top. It's um, pattern piece one through five. You'll hear it in the sew along. Let's talk about pattern sizing. So for this pattern, it comes in, I think it comes in two pattern envelopes. So the first pattern envelope is six through 14. And then the second one is 16 to 24. The size that I cut for this top is a size 20. Now in the sew along, you will hear me tell you to, if you need to size it up at the bust, the waist, and the hips. Now I did not go into complete details on how to size the pattern up. Reason being is because I do have many of videos that shows you how to size up tops. Um, if you do not know how to size up any tops or anything, let me know and I will give you the direct link to other videos that I have where I sized up some tops. However, um, you just make sure you do the bust if you need bust. I would always cut according to my high bust because it's larger than my full best. So that's how I am able to fit into a top and then your waist and your hips. Make sure you measure that. All right. So those are the, that's the pattern sizing and the size that I cut. Let's talk about, did I make any modifications? So I did not make any modifications to this pattern. I don't feel like it needs any modification whatsoever. So no, I did not make any modifications to this. Let's talk about, did it look like the photos or the drawings on the pattern envelope? Absolutely. It looks exactly like the pattern envelope. I actually enjoyed sewing this uh, top. Would I make it again? Absolutely. I would make it again <laughs> for sure. Let's talk about the instructions. Are the instructions easy to follow? To be honest with you, yes. I was surprised that they were easy to follow. I did not now, to be honest with you, I used the instructions for the sake of the tutorial. So you will see that in the sew along, but I did read a lot of the instructions just for the sake of this review and to make sure that the instructions are easy to follow and any of my um, true beginners that you are new to sewing, you are able to sew this up. The only thing that I could see you getting tripped up on would probably be the pleat, but if you follow the sew along, there's no issues there. Um, and the zipper. So if you have never sewn a zipper, I know Simplicity has videos on how to install invisible zippers, which Brittany J. Jones covers that. So I kind of walked you through how to baste it on and all that good stuff, but finishing off the zipper and all that good stuff, you just need to sew on the face and basically it's what you need to do, all right? <laughs> But yes, the instructions are easy to follow. Let's talk about likes and dislikes. I have no dislikes for this pattern. It's all love. I love this pattern. I like this pattern. That's what it is. All right. Let's talk about first time experiences. Do I have any first time experiences for this top? Not really, even though it does have like a back cutout, but this is not the first time I did like a back cutout. And I actually like this top because the cutout is not a big cutout to where you're showing boom, your entire back. It's just a little piece and I'm cool with that. So yeah, I, I don't have any first time experience whatsoever with this, right? All right, let's talk about what I recommend this pattern to others. Absolutely. This is why I did a sew along for those of you. Um, I know you guys are like, Hey, would you do a sew along to this pattern and that pattern? Um, I try to get sew alongs done. But sew alongs do take a long time. I'm not gonna lie to you, they do take a long time. So I'm trying to ease my way back into giving you guys more sew alongs and pattern reviews at the same time. So you have, you know, you could do both. You can hear the pattern review and then off to the sew along. Um, but I'm trying to give you guys more sew alongs to be honest with you. Well, that's it for this pattern review. I hope you enjoyed. Now that we have done the complete pattern review, let's go ahead and get right on into what you guys are here for, the sew along. Let's go ahead and get into the sew along for Simplicity 9705, which is the first pattern and first sew along for the Make 9 2023. This sew along is for the early spring top. So this is the one that one is Simplicity 9705. I will be doing view A um, on this pattern. I'm gonna put it up on the screen so you can see it as well. Some of the fabrics that you can use is chambray, cotton, crepe, rayon, ponte net, sateen, just to name a few. You will need a little bit of interfacing, about one 
and an eighth of a yard if you're doing view A. If you're doing view B or C, you'll need about one yard. And then if you're doing view D, you will need a half a yard of fabric, okay? Um, for notions, I'll get to that here in a second, but I am using a cotton fabric, just a solid cotton fabric. I'll put it up on the screen. It's just a simple broadcloth um, fabric from Joann's in the color red. All right. So I'll put that up on the screen so you can see that as well. So that is the pattern. So let's go ahead and get into the tools and supplies that you need in order to sew this uh, top up. All right, so the tools and supplies that you will need, you, I'm gonna put it up on the screen so you're able to see it. You will need some pens, you will need scissors, one for fabric, one for paper, never mix the two there. You will need rotary cutters, one for paper, one for fabric, never mix the two there as well. Also, you will need a pencil or a pen if you are sizing up your pattern. You will also need a ruler if you are sizing up your pattern to mark where your bust, your waist, and your hips are as well. You will need the pattern and the pattern and the pattern instructions so you can also see that as well. I like to use a highlighter, but you do not need to use a highlighter. It is to mark around your pa your pattern. Um, if you have difficulties cutting out a particular size, you will need a calculator. And the calculator is if you need to size your pattern up, it could, you know, it's used for, you know, figuring out how, you know, how, how many inches is across at your butt, your waist, and your hips, all right? You will also need a zipper and the zipper needs to be at least 14 inches. I have a longer zipper, so I will be cutting mine off at the end. You need 14 um, inch invisible zipper to do this pattern. And then you also need one 5 8 inch button as well. So that's all the things that you will need in order to construct this top. So let's go ahead and get over to the instructions in order to construct this top. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the instructions that you will need in order to construct Simplicity 9705. So before I get into the instructions, I'm not gonna tell you the pattern pieces just yet, but I do wanna draw your attention to the cutting layout um, for this pattern. I am doing view A, my fabric is 45 inches. So for all sizes, all pieces need to be facing with the right side of the pattern up on the fabric, fabric right sides together. So you're looking at the wrong side. You're gonna put the pattern piece down and then cut around. So I am following along to this cutting layout right here when, you know, if you're cutting out your pattern pieces, mine is already cut out. So that's what I will be doing. Also, let's go ahead and look at the glossary. So the sewing glossary, you always wanna take a look at that. Um, you will be making some darts, so read how to make darts. We have done darts so many times on this channel, so I will not walk you through how to do the dart, um, but you could also go to any of my top series patterns in order to do darts. Um, edge finish, edge finish is done at about, you stitch a fourth of an inch and then you turn it into that and st top stitch. However, I will be using my serger in order to do any edge stitching. Narrow hem, narrow hem is basically, you know, the same thing, making the hem narrow. Um, for a narrow hem, you need to um, create a five eighths of an inch seam allowance or whatever the seam allowance is. Press to that line, fold it, unfold it, fold it out and then, you know, top stitch. That's what you do for your narrow hem and then under stitching, you need to know what under stitching is as well. So that's all the things that you need to know in the glossary. I highly advise you to read over the glossary if you are new to sewing. Now this is not a, you know, easy to sew type video, but I'm gonna make it as easy as possible. Like I meant, just mentioned, a lot of these things we have done on this channel before, like under stitching, installing a zipper, pleats, darts, we have done it. But I'm gonna try to make this as simple as possible like I do for all the other sew alongs that I have done on my channel, okay? Now, 
just to move from the glossary into the instructions, um, I'm just going to tell you the numbers that we will be working on. I will be having the instructions right next to me so you can see how to do these things because like I said, the pattern states that it's an easy to sew. So I want to make it as easy as possible for you. So we will start off with, um, I am doing view A. So we will start off with the front and the back, making the darts and the pleats on step number one and number two. We will follow that down to three and four, where you will definitely make pleats along the side back of your uh, pattern piece, which is pattern piece number three. You will go from adding those pleats and installing the back, which is pattern piece number two. From there, you will definitely go ahead and add in the neck bend, which is pattern piece number four. Make sure you interface pattern piece number four. So you will do that. From there, we are going to flip, I'm gonna flip over to the next portion. Now, after you do step number six right here, which is at the neck bend, you will skip all the way over to pattern, I'm sorry, you will skip all the way over to step number 18, where you will start installing the zipper and facing pieces, okay? So step 18 through 20 is the are the instructions for the zipper and the facing. Once we do the zipper and the facing, it all it goes all the way to number 21, I'm sorry. We will go straight down, we'll skip number 22 because we're not doing view B or D. We will start here at 23, where we will start um, sewing together the front and back facing in 23, 24, and 25. That is the facing pieces right there. From there, we will finish it off. And what I mean by finishing it off in step 36, we will go ahead and make our buttonhole and our button in the back on the facing piece. We will then finish off with our narrow hem and step 37. 39, we will go ahead and do the hem on our sleeves. And then once you do that, you are all done with your top. So it's not a lot of steps. However, it is only five pattern pieces, so it should come together relatively quickly. One thing I wanna mention is some things will be out of order because if you have not been following along with my sew along, I read to see where I could cut down on going back and forth to the sewing machine. So if I get out of order, just note that I'm only saving you a little bit of time, okay? So I have a way of how I sew things together, but I really do want to do it in order so you can see, you know, because this is supposed to be an easy to sew pattern, so you could see the steps that I am going to be doing, all right? Now that we talked about that, let's go ahead and get into the pattern pieces you will need in order to construct this top. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the pattern pieces that you will need in order to construct this top. So the so there's only five pattern pieces, pattern piece one through five. So the first pattern is pattern piece number one, which is the front and sleeve for both view A and view B. I will be sewing along to view A. If you want to do another view, you can as well. But you need to cut to a fabric, all right? Next pattern is pattern piece number two, which is the back for this, um, for view A and view D. Like I said, I'm doing view A, so you need to cut to a fabric. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number three, which is the side back and sleeve for view A. You need to cut to a fabric. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number four, which is your back neck band. You need to cut for fabric and interface two. And the last pattern piece that you will need is pattern piece number five, which is your front and back neck facing. You need to cut one on the fold of fabric and cut one on the fold of interfacing. Now those are all the pattern pieces that you will need in order to construct this top. So let's go ahead and get right on into a little bit of sizing up. Now I'm not gonna do all the sizing up for you. I'm just gonna tell you what size I am doing doing and then kind of show you where you will go ahead and size up your pattern if you need to. Now, one thing I want to tell you is because the size that I'm cutting, I do not need to do any sizing up. 
However, grab pattern, the only thing that you're going to be doing if you need to size up is grab pattern piece number one and number two. The only two pieces that you will need to size up if you need to size up is using pattern piece number one and pattern piece number two, the back. Do not size up the front and sleeve and then turn around and do pattern piece number three, the side back and sleeve. Why? Because it's going to be off, okay? If you need to size up, I'm gonna say it one more time, you need to make sure you size up at the front and sleeve, which is pattern piece number one, and the back, which is pattern piece number two. All right, now, the first things first is you need to measure across your bust. Now this circle right here symbolizes your bust, all right? Now I am doing a size 20 because with seam allowance taken out and everything, it gives me a 43 approximately. Now, to be honest with you, that's right at where I want, 33 to 34, because my bust is a 40 and a half on some days and then sometimes it's 41. So with that being said, 43 is almost two inches more than what I would like. So that's enough ease for me. So I am cutting a size 20. Now, because I did all the measurements and all that good stuff, it gives me a 43. I know on the pattern it says a 44 and a half. It is incorrect, to be honest with you. All right, now moving down to the waist. Now, the waist on the pattern says 38 and a half or a 20. I measured it and it's a 34 when I measured across four. And what I'm measuring is I'm measuring the front, the back, and the side back pieces. So pattern piece one, two, and three is what I'm measuring, taking out the seam allowance, and then adding them together. I have showed you guys how to do this before. All right. So I measured across, it gave me 12.25, multiply that by two because we're cutting two, and then I took out the seam allowance. The seam allowance is five eighths here, five eighths here, right? So five eighths plus five eighths is 1.25 or one and one fourth. You have to do that same measurement again for that second pattern piece. So when you add 1.25 and 1.25, it comes out to 2.5. So you need to take off 2.5 for your front piece and your back piece for the seam allowance, okay? Because you're cutting two. So this gives me 22 inches all the way across here. You're going to do the same thing for the back and the side back. So then you get your waist measurement, all right? Now, my waist is a 33, so a 34 is perfectly fine. It's one inch more than what I need. So that works out perfectly. My problem is always hips because my hips is over 10 inches more than my waist. So with that being said, my hips is a 45 and a half. So I need to make sure that the hips, I could always grate from the waist down to the hips and out. Now, because I'm cutting a bigger size, the waist, the hips is actually going to end up being a 48.5. Well, that gives me more than enough ease in the hips when I did all the measurements, okay? So you'll do the same thing, measure across. It gave me 13.5. Multiply that by two, gave me 27. Subtract out the seam allowance of 2.5, which gave me 24.5. I did the same thing for both my sight back and my back pieces, which adding all of them together gave me 48 inches, all right? So that's how you do the front, the sight back. So you're gonna do the same thing for the sight back at the bust, the waist, and the hips. If you are unsure of how to figure out where your bust, your waist, and your hips, all you need to do is put these together, right? So there's a notch right here. Match up the notches. It gives you where your waistline's going to be, and then measure that all the way over, okay? So that's what you need to do for both the side back and the front in order to figure out where your pieces will match up and where your bust, your waist, and your hips are, all right? So now that we talked about that, go ahead and cut out all your pieces. Make sure you transfer all your notches and your dots and let's start sewing. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the sewing of this top. Simplicity 9705. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and make the darts at the collars, 
area and the waist start, and then we're going to make the pleat. So we will be doing step number one and step number two in the same um, run, okay? Because you guys know I want to cut down on going back and forth to the sewing machine. So you're going to be doing step one and step two and three and four all together in this. So I'm gonna show you how to do the front and then you can do the back yourself, all right? Now, another thing that I wanna tell you is pretty much like, I'm not gonna show you how to do every single dart, but I will show you how to do one dart at the collar and the uh, fishtail darts that's at the waist, all right? I feel like you can do the other dart yourself at the collar, the second dart, but I will show you how to do one and the fishtail darts, and then I'll show you how to do the pleat on the front to where you can do the pleats on the back yourself. So go ahead and grab pattern piece number one, the front and sleeve. Let me move the directions out of the way. Now I have already done one for you, so, I'm saying I have done already one front and sleeve. So one thing I wanna make sure is you know to transfer your dart lines, okay? So this is the collar darts and this is the waist dart. This is called a fishtail dart. So I'm gonna pin all of it together, all right? So first things first is I'm going to do one of the darts, just kind of show you so you can do it. You're gonna pin at that dot. Pin there, look to see where your line is, come out on the other side, make sure that it's on the line, and then just put your pin there. You're going to do it all the way up, so go ahead and pin out your darts on both of your darts now. All right, so now that I have this dart done, go ahead and do the other dart. I'm gonna show you how to do the waist dart or the fishtail dart. These are called fishtail darts. So it's done a little different than your collar dart up here. So the first thing you wanna do, kind of like the same way, you have two dots, make sure you transfer those two dots at the center and then two darts at the two dots at the end. So what you're gonna do is kinda like you're doing your collar dart, you're gonna pin at that dot at the bottom. Look to check and make sure that they match up on both sides. And then you're going to pin all the way up until you get to that dot. So go ahead and pin all the way up now, looking to make sure that they match up both front and back. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have it pinned from the bottom dot to the center dot, what you do at this point is you, you would sew it, but I'm just gonna do it this way, simply because it cuts down on how many times I go to the sewing machine. You're gonna flip it over and then do the exact same thing you just done. Pin at that dot, look to check to make sure that they match up on both ends, both top and bottom, and then you're gonna pin all the way to the middle dot again so go ahead and do that now all right so now that i have my waist dart pin and i have my collar dart pin you could go to the sewing machine and sew it together but i like to cut down on how many times i go back and forth to the sewing machine so i'm going to show you how you pin your darts all right now make sure you have your the the right side of your top facing up. The wrong side is facing down. It makes a big difference when you are doing your dart. So I'm gonna start from this side right here, moving this way because the darts are going to go to the left, okay? So you're going to take this clip. I make clips in mind. If you make you know, dots or you just kind of uh, showed where it was gonna be, you could make a line. So I'm gonna bring the pattern back. This is what I'm looking at. This is the wrong side of the pattern facing up, but this is the right side of my fabric, okay? So it tells me that all my darts are going towards the um, top instead of to the sleeve. So I'm going to take the first one and you can look at how it goes right here. I'm gonna take the first clipping, move it over to that second clipping and pin, okay? I'm gonna do that to the next clipping. Take this clipping, move it over to that other clipping. I make clips like I just mentioned instead of just 
you know, using the pencil to do it. it to me, I feel like it's easier, all right? I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna take this third pleat, move it over to the other one, and I'm gonna pin there as well. And then I'm gonna take this last clipping right here and move it to there. So I'm gonna take this clipping, move it over to the other clipping right here, and I'm going to pen, all right? So that is my pleats right there. Now, what I'm gonna do, first thing I'm gonna do, after I pin that, okay, so it's all pinned. First thing I'm gonna do is make the dart. So I'm going to back stitch at the beginning where my dart is. I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning, sew along my line for my dart, and then when I get to that dot, I am not going to back stitch. I'm just gonna pull up some thread and tie it two or three times to secure it in place. I'm gonna do that for both collar darts and my fishtail dart or my waist dart. Now, what I'm gonna do at my waist dart, I'm gonna start where the two dots are at the center. I'm gonna start right there, back stitch there, so all the way down to that end dot right here, pull some thread and tie it off. Once I do that, I'm gonna flip it over, starting back at the center dot, back stitch there again, so all the way down to the end dart again, pull some thread and tie it two or three times, all right? Once I'm done with my dart, I am just going to baste along the pleat area to keep it in place, okay? Once I do that, I'm just gonna press my darts down in place, and then you're going to press, I'm sorry, press my pleats down in place, and you're going to, going to press your darts towards the back, the center back. So you're going to be pressing towards this straight edge right here. So make sure all of your dart is going this direction towards the straight edge back, which is called the center back, all right? So go ahead and do that. Now. All right, so now that we have went ahead and done the darts, the waist darts, and the pleats for both the front and the side back and sleeve as well. All right, so you should have the darts done in pattern piece number one and your pleats, because I showed you how to do that. And you should have the pleats done for pattern piece number three as well, all right? So the next thing we're going to do is attach the front pieces together like you see in step number one. It says with right sides together, stitch the front section together at the center front seam. We're going to do that and we're also going to attach the back to the center back, which is step number four, where it says with right sides together, pin the back to side back and sleeve, matching notches and small dots. You're going to stitch and then you're gonna press your seam towards the center back. All right, just make note that you are going to be stitching from the dot all the way down, all right? So the first thing I wanna show you is pattern piece number one, all right? So I'm gonna pin both of these and then take them to the sewing machine and sew them together. So grab pattern piece number one, which are your front pattern pieces, and with right sides together, you're going to pin along the center front, all right? So you should have a notch, so make sure you match up your notches as well. If you wanna go ahead and search the center front before you sew it together, you can do that. However, I'm just going to uh, search mines together after pinning and sewing, and then press it to one side and top stitch. I'm just giving it that detail because I have a center front seam going down the front of my top. If you did not want that, you could have cut it on the fold to get rid of that, but I just like the detail that it's going to provide me for this top. So I'm just gonna keep it in and not do that, all right? So go ahead and finish pinning the remainder of your front now, all the way down to the bottom. Now that I have my center front pin using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, and then finish off your center front. 
Now, before I do that, I'm gonna show you one other thing to do before I go to the sewing machine. Grab your back pattern piece. So you need to grab one pattern piece number three and one pattern piece number two. So go ahead and grab pattern piece number two. So I'm just gonna move pattern piece number one out of the way. Grab pattern piece number two. So I have all of mine labeled for a reason. Then that way you know, you know where everything goes, okay? So now, first things first is you want right sides together, all right? So you have a dot there, but this pattern piece right here matches up with this pattern piece because you have a notch. Make sure you know how to place your items, okay? Your pattern pieces, all right? Now, make sure that that curved section, make sure you are not pinning like this, okay? Because it's not going to match, it's not going to do anything. Make sure you have the right pattern pieces, okay? I'm telling you that for a reason. And what you're gonna do is, Starting at that notch, you're gonna pin at the notch. Now, one thing I wanna mention is, I went ahead and searched from the top of pattern piece number three, all the way down to a little past that dot. Reason being is because this portion right here is not going to be sewn together with pattern piece number two, the back. So I wanna go ahead and finish that section off. Now, from the dot all the way down, I'm just going to search together. That's why it is not um, searched right now. So go ahead and pin your back pattern piece number two to pattern piece number three at the sides. I guess this is considered kind of like the side seams, I guess you could kind of say. So go ahead and pin from the bottom all the way to that dot, this dot right here now. All right, so this is not the side seam. This is the side seam. This is the center back seam is what, from the instructions, all right? Now that I have pattern piece number three, the side back, and pattern piece number two, the back, pinned together using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna start at the hem, back stitch at the beginning, and then sew all the way to the dot and back stitch at the dot. Do not go past the dot, all right? And then finish off your seam allowance and press your back towards the center back, all right? So go ahead and do the back and do the front now. All right, so now that I went ahead and attached my back to my side back, right sides together, I finished off the seams, so it's looking good. This is what the back looked like so far. Now, you're going to press your seam allowance towards the back, okay? So that's why my seam allowance is pressed towards the back, all right? So I'm gonna move this out of the way. Grab pattern piece number four, which is your um, back neck band, and you should have cut out four of these, okay, back neck bands. So what you're going to do is, it, is with right sides together, you're going to take one uninterface um, piece to one interface piece, right sides together, and then what you're going to do is you're gonna leave the, t the end that have the notch open, okay? So you're not gonna stitch that area. So what I'm gonna do is using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm gonna start at this dot using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, so all the way down. When I get kind of like right at 5 eighths of an inch, I'm going to pivot so across this side and then so across the top, stopping at this dot. I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Once I do that, I'm gonna trim it down and turn it right sides out, all right? So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I went ahead and did the neck bend, which was pattern piece number four, or the neck bend facing, I went ahead and added a uh, buttonhole on the left band, neck band, all right? So basically, let me bring the instructions. I know I'm not supposed to do this now, but I felt like it was gonna be easier to do it now than later, okay? When you have so many pieces together, all right? So on step number 36, so if you go back to step number six, right sides together, I sewed using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, the top, the side, and the bottom, and I left the side that had the notches unsewn, all right? So that's what it looks like right here. All right, so then on step number 36, it tells you to make the buttonhole in the left back. 
neck bend at marking, lap left back, neck bend over right, make button marking and right neck bend, and then you're gonna sew your button on at the marking, all right? So first things first, how you're going to determine which one needs the buttonhole is with right sides together. Now make sure that the portion that interface is facing up, okay? So what I did was I basically made sure that the right side, the non-interface side is down before I made my buttonhole. And I know that it needs to be pent like this. So I know that my buttonhole needs to be on the left, um, the left portion, uh, the left back neck band, okay? So this is the left side of my back. So when I turn it in, it's going to be completely right. So I made, went ahead and made my buttonhole in the left. So do not make your buttonhole in the right because then you're going to have it on the wrong side. So you wanna make sure that you are doing that on the left neck band instead of the right neck band, all right? After you turn it in, press it the next and make your neck, your buttonhole on the, the left neck band. What you're going to do now is you're going to pin at the dot. So you have a dot on the neck band and you have a dot on the neck back, okay? So you're going to pin and then you're going to, starting at the top dot, you're just gonna base this on. So at five eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm gonna use a half an inch because I don't wanna be unpicking basting stitches. So I'm just gonna base this on on both sides. So I'm gonna show you the other one as well. So I'm gonna grab the other one so you could kind of see what I mean. So on this one right here that doesn't have the um, buttonhole, it's going to be a button. I'm waiting to sew on that button because I wanna make sure that it fits perfectly like this, okay, like so. And I wanna make sure that it's tight enough around my neck. So that's why I don't wanna sew the button on just yet, all right? So go ahead and base both of these sections um, down, both of the neck bands down. You're gonna do that. And one other thing that I want you to do while you're at the sewing machine, well, go to your serger, and then this is pattern piece number five. All you're going to do is serge or finish off however you've been finishing off your seam allowance. Finish off, making sure if you use the serger, do not cut anything off. Turn off the knife of your uh, serger, and you're just going to finish off the bottom edge, okay? So go to your serger and do that as well. Once you do that, we're gonna do the zipper part next, all right? So go ahead and do those things now. All right, so I went ahead and sewn on my neck band on both of them. I went ahead and finished off my facing as well, that long facing piece that you cut on the fold, if you cut it on the fold, right? So this is what it's looking like. So now, one thing I'm gonna do is, because I feel like you guys could sew on a zipper without any problems, and if you have problems sewing on zippers, um, you, I'm, I'm going to put a link into uh, to one of the ways I do invisible zippers, all right? Now, I'm not going to walk you through how to do, how to sew on an invisible zipper because I have done that so many times on my channel, but I will show you kind of like how I put it together, all right? So now what I'm going to do is prepare my zipper area. This is the back of my top. So with right sides together, I am going to match up both back pieces, which is pattern piece number two. Let me grab my pens. And what I'm gonna do is, you may not be able to see it after surgeon, it's kind of hard to see your notches, but I can see mine. So I'm gonna pin at the top, pin at the bottom as well. And then you have a notch right here. So pin at that notch. That is where your zipper will end. So I'm gonna make two Put two pins right there. And then I'm just going to pin up, all the way up the um, back seams. Just pin all the way up. So go ahead and pin now.
So now that I have it pinned, using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm gonna start at the hem, back stitch at the beginning, so all the way up to those two pins, and then I'm going to back stitch. After I back stitch, I'm going to switch to a basting stitch. So from the hem all the way up to those two pins, I'm gonna use a regular length stitch at 2.5, back stitch at the beginning and at the end sewing using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once I get to the pins, the two pins right here, I'm going to switch from a regular length stitch to a basting stitch and sew from that, that notch right here all the way up to the top. I'm going to back stitch here but I'm not going to back stitch at the top. Once I do that, I'm going to press my seams open and then put interfacing only on the seam allowance. Do not put interfacing on the back of your top, just on the seam allowance to stabilize your zipper area. All right. Once you do that, install your zipper. All right. So I'm not going to walk you through installing the zipper. If you have issues installing the zipper, Please comment below and then I will go ahead and put a link to how I install zippers. I'm just going to put that quick video clip in. I'll actually put it into this video so you could see how I install the zipper so I don't have to walk you through it on this fabric. All right. So go ahead and install your zipper now. All right, so now that I went ahead right sides together, um, I sewn the center back, both of the back pieces together, 5 eighths of an inch. I just basically sewn from the bottom to that notch, regular length stitch, and then I switched to a basting stitch and sewn all the way up. So now what I'm going to do, because originally I wasn't going to show this on camera, but I am. So what I'm going to do is right here, I'm going to put a pin right here, and I'm going to basically take my zipper. Now I have a long zipper um, because that's what was in my stash. And what I'm going to do is with the portion that you unzip, it's going to be facing down like this, like so. And then all I'm going to do is basically make sure that I line up my zipper. I'm going to turn it to where I could see, I could basically get to it, right? I'm going to make sure that the end of my zipper, just a little past that, is just a little past it, not too much. And then I'm just going to pin all the way up. And I'm only pinning on the seam allowance, okay? So just pin your zipper in place all the way up, making sure that the middle of your zipper is right on the line that you created that's a basting stitch, all right? So go ahead and pin all the way up now. So now that I have one side of my zipper pinned in place, just on the seam allowance, not on the top itself. So I'm going to make sure that I do not that I do not have it pinned on the top. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just sewing on the zipper on the seam allowance. Just make sure you take the back piece and put, move that out of your way. You're just going to base uh, this side down and then you're going to turn it over and base from the bottom up. So go ahead and base now. So now that I have my zipper foot on and I'm just going to literally baste from right here all the way down. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm on a basting stitch. So I'm going to move my, um, my length of the stitching length to 5.0 and I'm going to take the pen out and I'm just going to base. Now don't base close to the zipper teeth, just base, uh, on the, um, zipper. So I'm just going to start back stitch and then just sew all the way down. You don't really have to back stitch, but I like to, but I'm just gonna sew all the way down. So go ahead and sew all the way down to the end now. Now that I have sewn on this side, I'm going to turn it over and I'm just gonna sew on the other side of the zipper. So I'm just going to turn it around and I'm going to do the same thing that I did to the other side Starting at the bottom, 
back stitch. And then I'm gonna sew all the way up just sewing on the seam allowance. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have this done, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off and un, um, take my seam ripper and rip through the basting stitch. So now that I have the zipper basted on, the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and turn it to the right side. So this is the right side of the top facing up towards me. And then what you wanna do is take your seam ripper, being very careful, and then you want to remove the basting stitch. Now I'm going to remove from the top down simply because I feel like it's easier to do it this way instead of doing it the opposite way of doing the zipper. I just feel like this is a easier way for me to install invisible zippers. So all I'm gonna do is being, caref be being very careful not to poke any holes in my top or my zipper area. I'm just gonna take my seam ripper and remove the basting stitches. So go ahead and do that now. So now that I remove the basting stitch, this is what it looks like. I'm just going to take my zipper and open it up and make sure it looks really nice. It's not getting tangled or anything when you open it up. So I'm just going to open it and this is what it looks like. Now what I'm going to do is go over to the sewing machine and using a regular length stitch and sew as close to the zipper teeth as possible without sewing on the zipper teeth. Now I'm not going to show you that part because I have shown this before, but just go to the sewing machine using a regular length stitch and your zipper foot sew as close to the teeth as possible without sewing on the teeth. You can use an invisible zipper foot if you have one. So go ahead and do that now. Right, so now that I have the zipper completely concealed in the back, I finished it off. Um, the next thing we're going to do, I think we are at step number 21. Let me bring the instructions back for you to see. So we are on step number 21. What we're going to do, I'm not going to read it to you because you can read that. We're, with right sides together, we're going to go ahead and attach front to back at the shoulders and the overarm seams. All right. So after we do stitch that then we'll do our side seams all right now the thing about it is I'm doing view a so you're gonna start at the dot so let me show you what that looks so go ahead and grab the front um, pattern pieces pattern piece number one lay it over your back now I'm gonna turn it to the side so I'm able to pin with no problem okay so I'm gonna turn mine to the side and I'm gonna grab my pins. And then what you wanna do, make sure that you have your, um, your tap out of your way. So you do not want it to, to accidentally sew it like this, right? So you wanna move it out of your way just a little bit, just for right now, and then pen, okay? So I'm going to definitely pin at the top. You're going to pin at this notch that you have. You're going to put pins in between. If you need to put pins in between, you can. It's completely up to you. That's a personal preference. And then you're going to pin all the way down to this dot, okay? So make sure you pin at that dot because that's where you're going to stop sewing, okay? Now, just go ahead and pin this area right here between the notch and the dot. So go ahead and pin that area now and then do it to the other side as well. So go ahead and pin now. Now that I have one side done, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side, making sure that the tab is out of the way. So go ahead and pin the other side now. So now that I have the underarm seam, which is Actually, the side seams uh, pin as well using 5 8 7 inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning, and sew all the way down to the hem. Now, I like to sew from the hem all the way up to the sleeve. That's just a personal preference for me, but do whichever way that you want. So, go ahead and sew your shoulder seams as well as your side seam underarm seam now. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so, now that I have the shoulders done. 
and finished off and the underarm seam. The next thing you want to do is your facing. So you're gonna turn it right side out. So just go ahead and turn it right side out like I am doing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over and unzip my zipper because you're going to be attaching your facing pieces. So grab pattern piece number five, your facing like this. And then with right sides together, you want to make sure that you have your zipper area out and you want to turn it with right sides facing. So basically you're going to be looking at your front. Your front is facing up towards you. And then what you're going to do is with right sides together, making sure you have the zipper area out, right? And you want to make sure that you are matching up those notches. So you have a notch here and you're going to pen. All right, so I'm gonna pen right here towards the back. I'm going to pen, making sure that my zipper is out of the way, and I'm going to pen here. And then I'm just going to pen at that corner. I'm gonna pin there. Now, one thing I wanna say when you pin at the corner is to make sure that the um, tab is facing on the inside and then you're gonna pin. You do not want it to be facing the opposite direction. You want it to be caught in to where when you sew it, it's correctly, okay? So then I'm just gonna pin the rest of it. Put some pins in between like so and then you're just going to pin all the way around your top so just go ahead and pin all the way around making sure that the dots meet up at the top of the corner so go ahead and do that now so now that i have it pinned all the way around now what i'm going to do is start in the center the center front so to one side. When I get to that dot, I'm gonna pivot and then sew all the way to the end right here and then sew down, okay? So I'm gonna start in the center, come to this dot. When I get to that dot, pivot, you're going to be using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Get to that dot, pivot, still using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, sew all the way down. When you get to the end, you're gonna back stitch at the end, being careful not to sew or break your needle sewing too fast over your zipper tape, all right? After you sew that, you're gonna sew down. So as close to the zipper teeth as possible without sewing on it, you're just gonna sew that down to finish it off, all right? Then after I do that, I'm gonna turn it over and then I'm going to start at the center again and then sew down, get to this point, pivot, sew all the way down on the other side, all right? Once I do that, I'm gonna make sure I press my seam allowance towards the facing, that's this part with the inner facing, and then understitch. I'm going to be understitching on the facing at a fourth of an inch seam allowance, all right? So you're gonna do that, you're gonna sew, trim it down. After you trim it down, you're gonna press your seam allowance towards the facing and understitch on the facing at a fourth of an inch seam allowance, all right? So go ahead and do your understitch. Sew this on and do your understitching now. All right, so now that I have the um, facing done, I have the facing done, I understitch. That's what you're seeing right here, the understitch. After I understitch, I pressed it. So I did the zipper. I finished off the zipper too, where I showed you that you need to sew down towards the zipper, understitch, and then I pressed it all the way around, all right? After I pressed it all the way around, I just basically used the lines to pretty much kind of like tack it down um, at, you know, so the facing is not flopping up on me. So I just basically used the lines to the back and then I put a line right here at the corner in the front. So basically I just made sure to line it up and just sew all the way down to where it's not flopping anymore. As you can see right here, I'm gonna bring it up so you can see right there. And then I did it right here and then one in the back right here too. Then that way, while wearing it, 
the facing is not flopping up on me, all right? So after you do that, there's like three things left for you to do. So the first thing you need to do is, I think the seam allowance is 5 8 of an inch hem allowance on the sleeve. So you need to do both sleeve. I have already done mine. And then you need to hem the bottom. So all I did was surge all the way around, create a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance hem line, basting stitch, and then I pressed it up and sewn on the right side to keep the hem in place. So that's what it looks like. The hem is in place. The zipper looks good. I could zip it all the way up. I would advise you to try it on, see if you need to take it in a little bit, if it's too small for you. Um, and the only thing you have to do is install your button. So I put my button on the right neck band, okay? Make sure it's on the right and then your buttonhole should have already been done on the left and all you're gonna do is go ahead and put it on like that. This is what it should be looking like. And then once you do that, you are all done with your top. This is the first top as part of Make 9 2023. This is Simplicity 9705. View A for this top. Now, before you ask me if I will do any other views on this top, I'm going to answer no, because the instructions are pretty much the same. The only difference like for view D is doing the ties at the front, every the back, I'm sorry, everything else is the same. View C, you would pretty much do the same thing that you see in this tutorial so I wouldn't do this one again um, as a sew along um, but I will be doing a review for this which I have already done a review for this as well so I hope you like the review as well as the sew along if you sew this pattern simplicity 9705 tag me on instagram at rochelle.handmade.designs that's it for the sew along all right so there you have it that's the complete pattern review and the sew along i hope you enjoyed if you make this top do not forget to tag me in your photos at rochelle.handmade.design on instagram all right well thank you so much for watching until next time keep sewing who knew I would make it this far? They hated, they never believed me. Yeah, I would never drop the ball. I know I make it look easy. Yeah, Mayweather with the defense. I don't care what a critic got to say. I got him picking up the pieces. Yeah, it up. Battle me 